made the cake. Oh. Hi, everyone. My name is Denise. I'm a health freedom activist in California, and I am co-founder of Freedom Angels. Hi, guys. I am Heidi. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, the belly of the beast. Can't wait to tell you about <laughs> the latest that hit us, but on to you now, Tara. <laughs> I am Tara, uh, co-founder of Freedom Angels in the northern Sierra Nevada mountains of California. So we always do a live at five Monday through Friday during this California lockdown. And today we're asking if you can please share a watch or share this video, start a watch party as uh, censorship has continued to take place on our pages. Uh, today we're going to start off with a conversation between between us on how these stay at home orders are changing and Heidi is at, like she said, the belly of the beast. Everything's changing quickly there. What's going on, Heidi? There we go. Okay, so last night we got um, tighter orders got sent to us and um, we'll post them for you guys to see, but I just want you guys to be aware of how ridiculous this has gotten in the Bay Area. Um, so it says that effective, it went into effect at midnight. We have stay at home orders that just got stricter. Um, they are saying that they supersede um, the previous order and go into effect, you know, like I said, it's a, it is com a complement to the indefinite statewide stay at home order issued by our governor earlier. Um, but now in this new order, here are the things that we are restricted to. The new order adds some clarifying language around essential businesses and activities, as well as some new directives, including use of playgrounds, dog parks, public picnic areas, and similar recreational areas is strictly prohibited. These areas must be closed to public use. Use of shared public recreational facilities, such as golf courses, tennis and basketball courts, pools and rock walls is prohibited. These facilities must be closed for recreational use. Sports requiring people to share a ball or other equipment must be limited to people in the same household. Requires essential businesses to develop a social distancing protocol before April 3rd and gave a whole nother two page addendum about what that means. And that's ridiculous too. We probably don't even have time to get into that, but I'll add the link so you can read that. Um, then it says most construction, residential and commercial is now prohibited. Get this one, here's, this is, a, this is, wow. Funerals are now limited to no more than 10 people attending. Essential businesses that continue to operate facilities must scale down operations to their essential component only. And then they talk about social distancing. It's the most powerful tool this is what they say, and I quote, we now have it in black and white. I cannot wait to show the world this. Um, a powerful tool to slow the spread of COVID-19, a virus so new that it has no approved medicines or vaccines. There we go, guys, black and white. This has nothing to do with the virus. This has everything mm -hmm. to do with what is approved medicine or mm -hmm. a vaccine or a treatment. We just, without... I mean, without our consent, we just all now are under government mandated health care there. Like this, go, go Tara, because I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah. And, and the key here, so this is six Bay Area counties plus the city of Berkeley. And the key piece to that, besides what you just ended with, is that this has been determined by the six county public health officers. And, and they have made the decision based on, um, I think it says in there, you know, that the anticipated need for, um, to accommodate surge capacity in the hospital down the road has been the reason to go to this further lockdown. And we'll let you know that like, you know, like when the further restrictions on businesses by, by doing this restriction on, residential and commercial um, construction, that's taking another huge chunk of the population and shoving them into, you know, the out of work and unemployment um, and, and destroying businesses for people even to have jobs to go back to. It's a very, very, you know, it's another huge 
below. It's not even just these, besides the holding, you know, not sharing balls unless you're family members. We've just like a whole nother huge segment of the population and industry has just been crushed by this. And it's by this, the health, the county health officers deciding that they need to reduce the potential um, for any coming surge in a few weeks or for need of um, beds capacity, basically, which actually Governor Newsom just addressed in that Facebook Live with Zuckerberg a couple of days ago, saying that actually they're pretty comfortable there. They were just trying to get more staff and such in. So yeah, and, and let's also make sure we tie back around to, again, nobody's talking therapeutics here. Right. No, no, they're not talking about any of that. They're talking about vaccines. They're talking about pharmaceutical drugs. They're not talking about the success rates of other hospitals using things like vitamin C. Um, we're very lucky in California. Well, not we, but, you know, public health that AB 262 passed just in time to allow the public health officer to do whatever they feel is necessary. And these are local public health officers. I mean, the, the timing and coincidence is pretty, um, I don't believe in coincidences, but you're right when it comes, when, when they said that construction is going to be prohibited, that gets, does away with a huge chunk of, the, of, of people's jobs. Like this affects my household. We're a one income household and it's going to be detrimental. The renter's health that we have in California is nothing. So, you know, when I contacted my landlord, they want three months of, pay, of um, bank statements. They want a list of all our assets. They want to know how we've been spending for the last three months before the crisis even hit. So we're going to have no, no help for California. We're going to have a huge, huge population of people who are moving in with their family, move, you know, multi-generational families living in one house because they can't afford to be, you know, on their own. It's going to be a real, it's going to be chaos. And what we're seeing, I don't feel this is for the virus at all. We're seeing they're going to, they're controlling. I know Indiana, I believe it was Indiana. They're now not letting, not allowing like Walmarts and Targets to sell non-essential items. Like who are they to tell us what's essential or not? What about the mom who's pregnant and needs some maternity clothes, you're not gonna be able to get anything, or the kids who need shoes. This is not about a virus anymore, if it ever was. Well, the, yeah, I think the key words here are essential and non-essential, yeah. right? Again, and we were talking about it yesterday. It's like, this is what it comes down to, being told what is essential and not essential. Mm -mm, that's not how it works yep. in a free society. Let's talk about the amazing news today. The yes. two pieces of news from yesterday and today on essential. Like who wants to lead like on which part? Because these, these are really big and these are the places to push back on. And it shows you how when you use your voice and you take a stand that you can make ground. Yep. Okay. This is some good stuff going on now. Absolutely. Here I am clinging to my Bible right now, guys, for the world to see. And I've been clinging to my Bible through all of this. In fact, I took massive heat. It was somewhat online publicly that people could see, but there was also behind the scene heat, serious heat I took for a post I made on Sunday of all days um, when I posted about a conversation that I had with another friend about going to a home church. And I was floored by the heat that I got from that. Little did I know the warfare that was going on on that very day that a pastor in Florida, a mega church pastor, was under the fire as well. He had made the determination that he was going to hold church. Again, guys, nobody is forcing anybody to go to church. He decided but with his faith, with his Bible, with God and him, that he was going to still hold church. And people came. A couple hundred, I hear. I mean, it's a mega church. There could have been thousands and thousands, but a couple hundred came. He got arrested. There's a nice little press conference. Christians cheered. They said that was good. Lots of people did. It was so horrific, the press conference. I had to shut my computer off. I literally could only watch about two minutes of it. As I watched, people who claim to be Christians say over and over again, this is amazing. This is exactly what should have happened. That pastor, he was endangering so many people's lives. Good on him, blah, blah, blah. 
then another pastor got online, um, Marcus Rogers, and I'm so glad my friend Lauren sent me um, his video, and I'll post that up there too. And he gave a stern admonition, and he said, woe to you. You know not what you're speaking about. I'm a pastor. I'm not holding church, but that's something between me and God that has nothing to do with me and this other pastor. And you should have all been called to pray the moment you heard the news that a pastor was um, arrested. Mm -hmm. So the amazing thing is it happened to be in Florida. We have a good friend there named Chris Van Hall, who she is a constitutionalist through and through, and her platform is all about we obey God and not man. And she has set up, you know, a legal structure too. And I know that she was a part of that team. And today, while it was sad that the state of Florida, they issued a 30 day lockdown, I have to say there was a huge victory because in that executive order, the governor outlined churches are essential. Woo! So Woo! if you are in Florida, this is, this is huge. So Rep Florida Republican Governor Rob DeSantis, he did issue, you know, the stay-at-home orders went to official orders, not just a request to stay at home, went to official 30-day orders, but that he put in religious services, churches, synagogues, what have you, that your attendance at them is essential. I mean, we, you know, that, that can't be, again, overstated how powerful that is that that was delineated in his executive orders for the state of Florida. I mean, you know, the nourishing the soul, the word, you know, is, is a hundred percent essential to staying human and being human. And so just that right there, I really believe that, I mean, I think we all believe that it's through our churches, through our religious practices, that the, the strongest, that's the place to gather and fight back that's the communities you know that's where you know we need to be speaking to our our congregations and their leadership and and emboldening them to understand the sovereignty they have and the the responsibility they have to stand up for religious freedoms and for um a way the way forward that includes that yeah absolutely and i just have to say um you know, a lot of the heat that I got for making my post about home churches um, was that there's online church. I mean, look what we're even doing right now. We're having an, on, an online communication. Well, we're not church. I mean, we're just here discussing current events. Yes, we could talk about God. And yes, um, God is everywhere. And God can work through any and all things. Absolutely. But it is scientifically proven that when people come together in mass to pray and worship, the energy changes like there is <laughs> there is energy that 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 cannot come behind from a screen like how we're separated here there are miracles that happened when you gather together and i have this story about um a friend that i watched her go through losing her husband to cancer and it was it was horrible um she was a christian and she had two young girls and um after he died she said, guys, I don't need meals. My girls don't need college scholarship funds. Like I don't need gas. I don't need any of that. You know what I need? I need you to come to my house and I need you to worship with me. I need people to come with drums and guitars and I need to worship with you. That's what I need. And do you know why I need that? Because when I worship, that is when I am in the presence of God, and that is the closest we can be to our, my husband and the kid's father. Guys, that, that doesn't happen on the screen. That doesn't happen yeah. over the radio. That is when people come together in one, lifting their voice together. And that is why we, as advocates, freedom fighters, whatever you want to call us, freedom angels, that is why we will never, ever ever back down from holding that line of coming together as one to worship the, the God, you know, to worship God. Never. It's never going to, I'm, I'm never, you're never going to get me to shut up about that. Sorry. No. I'll take all the heat. I'm hoping that um, our church starts listening to what we're saying. Primo and I are, are working on, on getting to the main pastors and talking about being open. This is a time 
that we need guidance. We need our pastors. We need our church members to come to us and just, and pray with us, pray for us. We have, we are facing really scary Mm -hmm. times right now. And for people who do, um, you know, worship and who do go to church, it is a change. It feels comforting. It doesn't feel like everything's so scary. We know where we're going. We're not, we have no fear, um, but we still need that comfort of what, you know, the, the personal relationships that we get when we go to church. I mean, it's a little crazy to me that we have liquor stores are open. Um, you know, I'm going to say this and I will take the heat for Freedom Angels, but Planned Parenthood's open. Um, I cannot believe we're in a time where we can allow something like that to happen and then say, no, close the churches. I mean, this is a t- we need guidance right now. and We can't just sit at home watching online, you know, church and feeling the same thing. We need to start talking to our churches and we need to start talking to our church members and calling them saying, please call and please ask to have church, you know, continue to go because we need help. I need guidance. I feel very lost right now, not going to church for the last few weeks. And yeah. It, yeah, I think the, the how important it is to have that moral voice, um, you know, for leadership to stand up, religious leadership to stand up with a moral voice and speak on the essential nature of this and the sovereignty of, of the church, but also the sovereignty of a person and their connection to their life, their spiritual life, their physical life, their body. And it's through through our, you know, religious groups or religious leaders that, and, and congregations that I think is the best, most or, way to organize that moral voice and speak out. And also, you know, people can handle attending services and carrying through with hygienic practices that can keep people healthy. And obviously people who are really sick with symptoms, uh, you know, they can stay home until they're better. Um, But this is, you know, it's not about disregarding what is common sense that I think, you know, people altruistically and self-protectively can be trusted to, you know, to employ, they can employ that. And beyond, I was going to say the moral voice of the church is, um, you know, this is the place that we need to be speaking like we were saying to our churches and communities that way because we really rely on it but in pushing back on what is essential because this is one place you can just see florida had a win the pastor who was arrested was in florida the governor who chose to make the executive order including it which is groundbreaking right now in the country that's freaking groundbreaking was is in florida this can't, this is huge. I mean, this, let this be a model for how to do this. And then Denise, talk about the other incredible thing today here in California, oh. like finally something in California. Finally. So, you know, the lost Southern California had um, their lockdowns of gun stores saying they were non-essential. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, but I completely feel that guns are essential in a time like this. And the NRA got in on it and they ended up suing and they won. So this is, again, I know not everybody agrees with the NRA, but right now they're protecting your second amendment right to bear arms. And if that wouldn't have happened, every single state would have followed suit. What happens in California, what happens in New York sets the precedence Mm -hmm. for what happens in other states. So when you get a win like that from the NRA, saying, no, mm-hmm. we have the right to purchase guns. We have the right to purchase ammunition. You cannot take our constitutional rights like that without a fight. Join the NRA. Start getting involved because I can guarantee you that there's going to be so many other states looking to ban the sale of guns, sale of ammunition. I mean, they're already looking at, at banning the sale of alcohol, which isn't a big, you know, for me, it's not a big deal. For other people, it is. The point here is the freedom to do what our constitution gave us and what our God-given rights are. Here you have these governors and these local state agencies like public health now creating these policies. They have no right to do so. So it's a win. This is, today we have lots of wins. We have people standing up saying no more. 
we have these entities who are now getting together and saying, okay, this is enough. Like we've complied, we've been real quiet. Mm -hmm. And now it, now that we're seeing 30 days and we're seeing now two weeks of very bad things, I mean, you have to prepare yourself and I'm sorry, guns and ammunition is essential for households. Um, I'm seeing here Ooh. that Texas churches, I guess, are yes. affected too. So yay, we have another state yes. that churches Ooh. are considered essential. Thank you, God, mm -hmm. for that. Um, it does, somebody else said someone needs to sue on behalf of the churches. Well, I mean, yes, I'm not going to say that lawsuits aren't, you know, don't have their place, but does it need to go there? I mean, in Florida, they did it without a lawsuit. So um, I think it's coming together and Chris Ann Hall, they already have the resources there. So we will definitely link her um, information there um, because she, she already has this in place. And as more people join together, that's what it is. Join the already established, like the NRA or like Chris Ann Hall's Liberty First, like join the groups that are there to, to push back. That's how we hold the line. That's how we stay human, right, Tara? <laughs> Maybe, maybe Tara, we lost, uh-oh, we lost Denise. Yeah. Yeah, mine got weird too for a bit. Oh, um, well, probably call back in. it's because we're talking about guns in the yeah. Bible. So that's why we're getting, well, that's why phones are going down. And we're talking about, right, and we're talking about people using their voice and standing in the courage of their convictions. We have that power. We still have our voice, but we have to all use it together. And, um, you know, we have to hold these local county health officials of, uh, you know, accountable. Go to your merchants groups, go to your, you know, industry advocacy groups and start saying, are you asking the questions on what model, on what grounds this is be these orders are being determined? What, show me the data. Show right. me what you're using to, you know, county health officer, show me what you are using to make these decisions, what data, what modeling, and on, you know, if you're taking your authority to do this, you're doing this, you know, on what grounds? Yeah, ab absolutely. And there's no, you know, due process and, and, and informed consent here are, are not being had. And the, the level of pushing for transparency, whether it be for, you know, COVID patients in the hospital or people who are, um, diagnosed in a doctor's office and getting access to medicines, uh, therapeutics early on, or county health agencies restricting and, you know, tightening ordinances. We need to be fighting with our voices and our questions for more transparency, more accountability on what is, what is behind, you know, what is their, you know, what are they using to base these on? And push them back, show them you want to know. Hold it up, them accountable. Bring this all out into the light of day. I think that's one thing that every human can in, can account to right now, stand to right now is that there's no information. Nobody has any information. Even if your loved one is in the hospital right now with COVID, you know, you don't know. You get a once a day call, maybe finding out, giving some information on how they may be doing or not, or what remedies they're getting or not. We don't know. Nope, that is true. Anybody who thinks we're the crazy ones, I mean, go, like we said the other day, go to the CDC website, start reading how many times they say, we don't know, it is unknown, we think, we're not sure. So again, don't criticize us for wanting to um, operate our immune systems, like to, to take responsibility for our um, own immune systems. Um, yes, we know that we could get sick, like that, like nobody is guaranteed a germ sick free life. Yes, we know that death is part of the cycle of life. Do we want people to die? No. But are we going so overboard that in the midst of this, we've created 45,000 more problems by crashing the economy, by crashing people's spiritual life, by crashing people's psychological lives. Like, I can't tell you how many mothers are reaching out and like, I'm at the end of my rope with my kids at home. I can't do this anymore. Like they, they, they're trapped. Like what about the people in apartments that don't have an outside space to go right now that are on lockdown? Like this is, they're literally caging us. This is, this is despicable. Mm -hmm. They're caging us and then telling our neighbors mm -hmm. to call the cops on us. I mean, 
I live in a place, I don't have a backyard. Yep. I have nothing but cement. So, and honestly, in my area, the first things that started happening were home invasions. So I can't even sit with my kids outside because the neighborhood I live in, I'm like, I don't know what could happen. So I have to, I have to take my children to the park. I have to go to the park myself. We have to dig our, our feet in grass and just feel the earth. And when you don't do that, when you're sitting at home and your kids are just sitting there watching TV or playing on their electronics all day and mom and dad are completely fed up and just had it, things can get really tense in a household. So I don't understand why people are calling the police on their neighbor. You have no idea their situation. You don't know how long they've been quarantined. You know, you don't know how long they've obeyed these policies. So you have kids at parks and you have kids riding their bikes. And then you have people calling the police on them and taking pictures and sending it to the police department. Hello, history. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. And again, when we yeah, uh, hello history. Thank other thing is anybody going also to their actual county sites and actually looking at what's being reported? I mean, just today, Newsom said seven hundred and seventy-four patients in intensive care in California. We are a state of forty million people and seven hundred and seventy-four yep. in intensive care. Yes, of course. Again, we don't wish anybody in intensive care. I, I've been there, done that. I know what that is. Um, we especially don't want people in intensive care when they're making ridiculous regulations that no one else is allowed in there, no family members. But all that to say, guys, we, we're losing perspective when, I mean, look at, the, look at the numbers. These are the numbers they're giving us, 774 in a state of 40 million and then they're using things over and over again. We don't know. We're not sure. We don't know. No approved medicine or vaccines have been issued. And they're still utilizing that same. Yeah, approved. That, 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 yeah, approved. But they're utilizing the same numbers that they retracted from the beginning. So, you know, we did not have these kinds of projected numbers after that. After, what's his name? Um, what was his name again? The epidemiologist? I forgot. But, you know, the one who, who created the 2.2 million people in, Cal in the United States are going to fall ill to this. So Newsom is still utilizing that same, those same numbers, projecting those same numbers, and then the media is scaring the bejesus out of people, telling them how many body bags are being ordered. Like, stop watching TV would be the very first thing you can do to, to stop the fear that you're getting turn off your TV, turn off your news. You know, if you want to get the information, tune in to the White House briefings, to your local government briefings so you understand what's going on. But for heaven's sakes, turn off the news. They are there simply to instill fear and to allow the, right. the public shaming, the social pressure of being home. I'm not going to be home. I can't. I, I refuse to sit here while being healthy and quarantine myself for a just in case. That's not how controlling this thing is going to work. Yes, Sandy is saying, notice that they're concentrating now on the cases and meaning the positive cases yes. and not the deaths. Because, you know, again, they're trying to sensationalize all these numbers. So guys, don't believe anything that I'm saying or Denise or Tara are saying, go look it up for yourself. We're telling you, go to the CDC, go to your public county health office, you know, um, the website, go to Newsom, you know, to your governor's website, like the number, use their numbers and then make your own determination, figure out how many people live in your county, how many live in your state. Like that's how you evaluate risk. So right. if they are saying we're going to have like crazy, like Trump has said, the next two weeks are going to be insanely painful. Well, show us the, where, where you're getting this data from, because this does not, yep. not add up. Show us Show where us your the data comes from. Because has anybody seen it? Where are they getting these numbers from? And you can go onto the CDC. I believe it's page 35. Oh. Go to the, to the CDC website and you look at the COVID-19. And there's like a, you know, a section you can click. It's page 35. And it even tells you that these kits are not kits that are going to be able to actually test for coronavirus. Like the kits are not... Um, they're not doing this, the, what they're supposed to do. We're now seeing that the kits were contaminated, so they can't even use those. I mean, the numbers are not adding up. The kits are not working properly. What is the deal here? Why are we allowing them to do these types of, of 
basically freedom grabs for data we nobody has seen. Nobody has seen this data that they're claiming is going to kill millions of people in the United States. Well, one thing I think we all know is that, you know, deaths being labeled as COVID deaths are not an accurate reflection of, you know, what actually is, is, is happening. We don't, you know, we don't know if people are dying with it or of it. That's, you know, the basic piece. And then on the other end, we know that the numbers haven't been accurate for people who've been infected and recovered or such from it because there hasn't been adequate testing. And so, yes, those numbers will rise as they, you know, push out more testing. But again, in testing, we have to be very careful with because that's that slippery, slippery slope for antibody testing and immunity certificates and, and surveillance tracking. It's all tied together. So we have to be really careful how we, you know, we, what we allow, honestly, what we allow. And Trump was right when he said today on his press conference today that it's going to get a lot worse in the next couple of weeks. Well, yes, of course it's going to get a lot worse. People are out of work. The world's shut down. People are hurting. This is like the world is hurting. Whether, you know, no matter what, even if not a single further case occurs of COVID or any other disease, the people are hurting and it's going to get a lot worse. And it can only, you can only take so much before you have to start fighting back for your livelihood, for your life, for your freedoms, for your own actual health. Fighting back at this point, even for therapeutics. Newsom just said the other day with the Zuckerberg Live, the one thing we know that works is ventilators. Dude, that's for when you're like at the end, you're hanging in the balance of it all. We have that is like not a therapeutic. and z -Pack. Right, thank you not a treatment like we have ways to start this stuff early and back it off so it's just you know shame on all shame, shame on. so i did want to yeah, of course it's going to get worse this is not sustainable <laughs> not sustainable correct and since you brought up the trump press conference today i will say there's another thing that he got railed on today and again i'm not for the republicans or for the democrats i am like for common sense so Stop with your partisanness. That's what this all has become. You did, you did, you did, you did. Like, ah. But anyways, one thing that one reporter was just railing on Trump about was all the people that are out of jobs right now, they've just lost their insurance. And that's actually a valid concern, very, very valid concern. I did not like that mm -hmm. um, the administration had no answer. They literally had no answer. They said Medicaid. We're, we're expanding Medicaid. Well, as the reporter pushed back, he said, well, that's only if you income qualify. Well, I don't know if the goal is to make everybody now income <laughs> qualify because we're all losing our jobs, but he kept pushing on the middle class and he's saying there's nothing for the middle class. And I want to say right now, guys, there is something for the middle class. Um, I've been talking about it over and over again. It has, it's been a while since I talked recently, but there are healthcare co-ops that you can join right now. And I will post the link to the five ones that I'm, I'm aware of Obviously, everybody needs to do their own due diligence. Pre-existing conditions are not something they will cover. They, they'll still allow you to join and anything that happens forward, they're gonna help cover. Um, but for people that are hurting and they literally just need something because that was a the thing they just kept pushing back in the press conference. They said, well, it doesn't, if you're uninsured, you get tested for COVID and you can get treated for COVID, but that's it. Like think about, as I was saying earlier um, to Denise, like, you know, there's kids stuck at home and they're gonna do crazy things because they're bored and they're gonna smack each other and crack their head open and end up in the hospital. Well, who's paying for that now that you're an uninsured family? No, one, you know what I mean? That's gonna cause people even more problems. But in that case, this is where I'm saying a healthcare co-op would cover that. So I'm gonna put the link for all the five. I personally belong to Samaritan's Ministry, so I can speak to the fact that my family has been using it for four and a half years and it is amazing. I know people on each of the links that I'm gonna send, um, make sure I'm put in the description. But right now, please, please, please share this video with everybody you know, because at this point, guys, we all know somebody who's just lost their insurance and nobody can afford COBRA right now. So this is, this is actually an answer for, for people right now. It's scary. You know, I have two, two boys and they play rough right now. I'm saying, please don't do that. Like we can't go to the hospital. 
we can't do this. It's really, it's a lot of pressure on parents to make sure that we're watching absolutely everything. You know, my boys are older, so I don't have to sit there all the time, but that is a fear. They're going to break their arm. They're going to fall and they're going to, you know, they're going to hurt something. What, what do we do now? We don't have insurance because we're not working the hours that we're supposed to work in order to get insurance. So I'm really, I'm going to look into this. I know Heidi, you've been talking about it for a while and I have to start looking into it. I mean, we have to start looking at solutions outside of mainstream. That's what got us in this position. I mean, you know, a lot of people are playing the Republicans and Democrats, but in all honesty, it's our fault. We have been so disengaged from politics We've been so disengaged and looking at all the pretty shiny things that they've given us to be distracted with. We never got involved mm -hmm. in politics. We didn't say, okay, stop, you know, this is going too far. So now we've let these two parties take con complete control over us. And we're shocked that this is happening. Like they can't police themselves. Yeah. You give somebody power, they're going to use that power. So we need to start getting involved. I hope you guys do share this live, please. We're getting censored that information on healthcare and all the great information that's coming out is super important for people to hear. Uh, so share it. We have a YouTube channel, the uh, Freedom Angels, which we're working on to get all the videos up and going. So if you guys miss any of it. One other thing that um, I wanted to add today that also happened with Newsom's, um, con con uh, he had a statement, he had whatever you call it, sorry. My, uh, anyways. <laughs> He talked about, he told us guys, California schools were shut down for the rest of the year. So brace yourself. No, um, obviously as people start to find their footing, we can talk about homeschooling. But again, guys, again, like we're in crisis mode still. All you yeah. need to be doing is practicing how I'm gonna love my child. Academics mm -hmm. will come when they come. Don't even worry about that. So, um, but this is, this is the thing you should be concerned about or just take note about what is really going on. Is this about a virus or just about something else? Um, during this time though, he's going to make sure he pledged that there's going to be a hundred thousand points for wireless to go up throughout our state. So we're getting Google coming in to save the day with 100,000 access points to boost Wi-Fi and broadband capacity across the state. So there you guys go. Is this about a virus? You know, you tell me, please. I'm please convince people. me that we are so crazy right here. 5G is going up everywhere. I can't tell you how many messages I get every single day of pictures of people saying, look at what's up in my neighborhood. Look at what's up at my kid's school. And it's real cute because they have this like fine print little sticker that they put slap on the pole saying get stay three feet away because it can cause you harm so obviously this thing is harmful and it's being put on our school campuses while children are in these these classrooms with their laptops and their ipads and their wi-fi and their 5g everything is hitting them for seven and a half hours sitting in the same classroom all day I am glad there's no school until summer. Um, I think this is a really great opportunity for parents. Once crisis mode is over, ground yourself, kind of take it, take a, a deep breath and dive into homeschooling. It will be the best decision that you will ever make for your children. I can say that I homeschool my five-year-old, best decision I've ever made. So I know it's scary, but you know, there are solutions. There's always solutions to what's going on. You just have to really get, you know, you have to activate yourself in order to do it. <laughs> The well, other and all this stuff that's going on, you know, 5G install, like all these, you know, restrictions and come, you know, everything is being done without informed consent and due process. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is straight up BS. And, you know, this is why, you know, it's so, I've always said like the way to actually affect mo change, mo you know, is to actually take over the you know, your board of supervisors, your planning department, your ag inspector, your freaking health department. You've got like literally hold those people responsible. We need people with, you know, conviction, vision that can hold the line for truth and freedom and really aren't going to be playing things away. I can't even believe that people in the positions uh, that are making these decisions are, how can they even sleep at night? making these decisions under the cloak of darkness and the cover of like secrecy like this. Like how could, whether you believe in what you're doing or not, you are, you're still doing it 
in such a shady way that is completely out of line with with you know liberty truth with with it's just even just straight up common sense and decency it's yeah. so Heidi, bad. do we do um, we have any questions i know we're really over our our 30 minute mark we're like are we? we are um we are over um somebody talked about wuhan which by the way i just heard today i haven't verified it yet but i heard from a pretty reliable person that i trust that wuhan is back on lockdown shocker guys um yep. We, we said it a couple lives ago that we're going to go through these waves of lockdown, get to come out. Lockdown, get to come out. This is all about a Pavlovian response that they are training us with. Guys, yeah. it's happening in our grocery stores right now. As they tighten yeah. in these restrictions, yeah. for those of us who don't resist, they're tightening, 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 tightening. Notice how when you, the only thing we're allowed to go to is a grocery store and the signage that is literally everywhere, six feet, the tape on the ground, six feet. I mean, a new restriction just came out. I mean, it went ridiculous today in grocery stores. All that to say, and every time you see those signs, they're tied to food. Isn't that interesting? Every single time, today. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages we're seeing and then we're hearing like all of that and it's all being tied to food. Yeah, well, I went today. It was, it was one way in and one way out. If there was, I don't, that can't even be legal. If there was an emergency, there is no way to get out. I went to Winco today and there's, there's barricades on each aisle and you have to go in order. So you have like six to seven people in the aisle going like a little snake order because that's the way they let you go. And if there was some, if I needed to get out, I would literally be running my car into people because I couldn't get out. So this is a way, we are rats in a maze right now. Absolutely. That's somebody we should well, be calling. Let's call the fire marshal now. Yeah. I think that'd be fascinating. <laughs> fire marshal overseeing all of these new grocery store um, guidelines. Right. Yep. All right, guys. Well, so it's one it, thing that we learned in that... Well, as we say, it's one thing we learned in that 11-day Occupy at the Capitol. It's all about push and how far, like, where that boundary is. And they're, you know, where you push back or where you don't, that's what you get. That's what you're going to get. You know, you're, we don't, just like, you know, Hassner, uh, Rodney Howard Brown in Tampa pushed back. And look where Florida is. The NRA and gun shop owners in California pushed back. And look what happened. It became essential infrastructure in California. We have a voice. We can push back. It's on us. Nobody's saying not to be safe hygienically. Nobody's not saying to, you know, we're saying take care of your health and wellness, but push back. Push back and ask for transparency. Ask for, you know, honestly, they're going to just keep taking ground after ground unless we push. Yep. This is a freedom grab. That's what it is. Just like a land grab. They're trying to grab our freedom quickly and smoothly so we don't bite back. So I hope you guys have taken some information that uh, you appreciate from this live. We will be live every day at five o'clock California time uh, talking about the issues that we've seen happen throughout the day. If you can please share this live, start a watch party, and this will be up on our YouTube channel, Freedom Angels, fairly soon. We will let you know. So thank you guys for tuning in. Oh, yep. One more thing, I think this is awesome for all our viewers because you know it's almost six o'clock. Good old Sandy just let us know that Senator Pan is doing a live at 6 p.m. on his Facebook page to talk about the census 2020. I think we all need to head on over there. And yes, that is something that we do need to address is census 2020. I think that yeah. ties all in conveniently to everything that's going on right now. So. Well, I'm banned from Facebook, so I can't, but that's a really good opportunity for you guys to go over make your comments, let your comments be seen and engage in the conversation um, because he can't ban you while he's live. So this is a great opportunity to do it. So thank you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. We will see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe and be kind to each other. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.